Yeah, good evening. Um, good afternoon to everyone from the different part of the world. Um, welcome to Fundism, our webinar on meta analysis and systematic literature review. For those who are not familiar with uh, my organization, I just, we have some brief introduction and um, before going on to our main event. Okay, uh, this is uh, I am a host of this uh, event and organizer of this uh, event, Mahmoud Intiaj Hussain. I completed my uh, master's from University of Putra, Malaysia, and I completed my bachelor and diploma also from in Malaysia. Uh, I am the lead consultant and founder of Onism Consultancy. Um, I am also part time faculty of African Development London University. And uh, besides that, I also act as a reviewer and also editorial member from also so, uh, in some journals. So far, I have published 35 articles, uh, including Scopus and Q1, Q2, Q3. Um, so far, I attended 230 plus training and organized several workshops. So within my short span of career, I'm a early age researcher. Uh, this is the uh, services of the Onism Consultancy. Basically, um, we focus on to the soft skill and hard skill both. Uh, we provided the research service mostly the proofreading, copy editing, substantive editing, uh, writing, rewriting, formatting, target journal selection, plagiarism checking, and plagiarism uh, removing, um, or supervisory mentorship. And besides this, we also organize the conferences and workshops. Uh, our functional skill services, some SPSS, uh, SEM, MOS, Strata, EVUs, uh, and Vivo, NCs for the engineering, Mentally, and EndNote, and Microsoft Office. And uh, soft skill development, uh, we provided some uh, training on leadership, communication, negotiation skill, public speaking, critical thinking, selling skill development, emotional intelligence, digital marketing skill, NLP, and academic writing. And also besides that, we have also the professional courses like IELTS preparation course and PMP preparatory course, Six Sigma certification. So this was our uh, initial, we started the Onism in 2019, December, uh, before the COVID. Uh, that time we were unaware about the COVID. Uh, we did some uh, physical activities uh, in workshop in the university and also some uh, places. Uh, we organized the soft skill fest, which was uh, in July, uh, two days. And uh, this was our some credentiality. Uh, we assisted 120 publications, proofreading, edited uh, 48 manuscripts. And under our consultation, uh, 35 MS and PhD students, uh, 18 already passed the Viva, nine in the C stage, and eight in the PD stage. So this was our um, previous conferences uh, back in August and also in December. We have also upcoming conferences within two months. Uh, we organized uh, several webinars uh, in the pandemic, uh, pandemic especially uh, in the key element of good thesis, uh, smart email writing, uh, how to prepare for the Viva and how to act in the during the Viva, uh, how to select a high impact academic journal, qualitative research in social science and vivo. So far we organized several workshops. Uh, we have the video also in the, in the YouTube, you can check it out. Uh, this, uh, uh, this is our long courses like econometrics course, SPSS, EVUs, and STATA and R. Uh, those are the workshops and um, long courses, two months and two and a half month. Uh, this is uh, actually going on, these courses. Uh, the neuro marketing, then uh, continuity marketing, blockchain, and AI fintech. So we accepting registration for these courses till now. Uh, this is our uh, ad advisor, Dr. Asif Mahbub Kodim, he is a Dean of the Binary University. He is my research mentor as well. Dr. Moshaf Aitabash, uh, MBA Director, al Ain University, uh, Dubai. Uh, Dr. Siu Meiling, uh, PMP. Uh, she is Senior Lecturer of the University of Malaysia. He is also my supervisor. Uh, Dr. Samuel from the Nigeria. Um, Mr. Noor al Ahad, he is from Japan. Dr. Osman, he is from Bangladesh, uh, ST Professor. Dr. Asit Chaman, he is from the Cardiff Metropolitan UK. And as a professor, Dr. Mijana Rahman from Bangladesh. This is our team member, um, Yasmin Jamadar. She is doing PhD in UPM. She is the co founder of the Onism. Uh, Mr. Riyadh, 
He is also PhD uh, candidate in UPM. Mr. Insiat uh, is a technical executive and Tonmoy. Uh, he is a um, MSc student of UPM. He's, he is publicity um, executive. So uh, this is our resource person for three days workshop, uh, Dr. Jaspit Kaur. Uh, he is the associate professor for Academy in New Delhi. Uh, he is a huge experience, 16 years of teaching experience. Uh, she is also the certified AMT certified faculty from AIMA. Uh, she also recipient of the uh, awards for the best research faculty. Uh, so far, she authored and co-authored a lot of journals and in a lot of editorial member. Uh, and also is a reviewer in Scopus, ABDC, um, uh, like Academic Research Management, Asian Journal of Marketing. So th this is a uh, uh, introduction from my side. So thank you so much and welcome to everyone. Um, uh, the floor is open. Uh, the floor is for handover to go into Ms. Ms. Jasmith Kaur. So I'm stopping my sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Siyaz. And um, I've worked with you for the first time, but everything has been very well managed. Everybody mailed, everybody uh, WhatsApp groups, everything has been very well managed. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm honored. And I'm looking forward for more uh, workshops. For example, in July end, we are planning a workshop on NBO, which I'll be taking. So that is also there. So we will uh, right. use that later on. Yes, yes, yes. OK, now. Um, uh, let me start with the topic. I'm sharing my screen. Let me straight away start with the topic that I have today. So I'll be taking you through a, a new technique of research, which is called systematic literature review and meta-analysis, right? So um, uh, first, let me tell you why uh, this, this new technique has come up. So most of the research that even Sir listed and even the ones which are going on, uh, you know, nowadays, or, or let's say till last year. Um, I think the workshops on SEM were very common, structural equational modeling, okay? Type of data collection, primary. There was another workshop which was very common, which is common, uh, which is uh, new of course, uh, which is qualitative research through NVO where we tell the participants that how you uh, collect qualitative data from primary research. But slowly and gradually, when I see my LinkedIn account, I see uh, most of the known people, um, known as in people of the caliber of Yogesh Devedi or Justin Paul, um, Dr. Satish from MNIT Jaipur. So th th these are the known people that I call. They are suddenly switching to writing papers on systematic literature review, meta-analysis, bibliometric analysis. Okay, and all these three techniques which are really doing the rounds nowadays. Even when you see a published paper, you see this technique being used. These are new techniques and they are all based on secondary data, okay? So all these three techniques are, uh, okay, uh, I, I, will, I will explain comprehensive meta-analysis also, but it's a paid software. So it won't be of too much of use to you. Okay, so CMA is out of the scope of this workshop, but um, it is a paid software. Let me come to that. I'll explain everything. So uh, systematic literature review and meta-analysis, SLR and meta-analysis. These are the two topics I'm going to complete in the coming three days. By the end of what you learn in these three days, you should be able to write a paper. You should be able to collect secondary data and write a paper. Now, let me straight away go to... Um, yeah, so let me go to introduction of the, this is what I generally do in a five day workshop and I'll be taking you through most of the topics. Let, let me first understand what is SLR, so systematic literature review. Um, in systematic literature review, what we do is we collect all possible studies which are present in the past, okay? Which studies? Secondary data. Secondary data as in they are published studies or they are dissertation studies or they are studies which have already been done. There is a result reported. Okay, so there is a quantitative result which has been reported. Okay, so uh, we, we take all studies which are from secondary data. Okay, we take studies which are from secondary data, not from primary data, we don't go to the consumer. Okay, so the data collection of this, these, these techniques that I'm talking about will be done from Scopus 
from ProQuest, from Web of Science and these databases, right? Number one. Number two, what is a systematic literature review? A systematic literature review collects all possible studies related to a given topic, reviews the result, consolidates them, summarizes them. So these are techniques when I talk of system uh, SLR or when I talk of meta-analysis or bibliometric analysis, which is not in the scope of this workshop, all these techniques are pulling out papers of say the past, uh, you know, 20 years, all papers, dissertations, conferences, published, unpublished, and pulling them down, seeing their results and consolidating them. So these consolidations are being done for the past 20 years. There's a special paper, special type of paper, which uh, nowadays I've started in bibliometric analysis, where what they do is they pick up a journal. So I pick up journal of business research. I pick up all the papers of green marketing from that journal, all papers which have been published ever on green marketing in journal of business research, and I consolidate them and summarize the results. Okay, so this is also happening. Now, uh, a systematic literature review process is, is you've understood. So I am consolidating 20 years of research I am summarizing 20 years of his research and uh, that is huge. That is huge. Um, I'll explain to you what is the difference between a normal review paper and an SLR. Systematic literature review, I'll call SLR. So um, many of you, when you were in your first year of PhD or when you had just started research, you must have been told by your guides that just write a review paper. If you don't know statistics, if you don't know uh, uh, technical techniques, just do a review paper, okay? This basic review paper is also called narrative review paper, okay? So we have an SLR and we have a narrative review. Now, why is SLR different? I mean, see, systematic literature review, when you listen to it, is nothing but literature review. So you might say we know how to do literature review. We know that there is a chapter number two in every dissertation, in every um, research paper, which is review of literature, and we know how to do it. So this is, by the time I end this one hour, you'll come to know that this is nothing related to that one paragraph. SLR is, I mean, it is, it is too complex as compared to that one paragraph, uh, paragraph number two that you write in a research paper. So. Let me explain this with a very simple example. Forget a research, just try and unwind. It's, it's Friday evening, just try and unwind a little. Um, just imagine that, um, and, and in COVID times, I think we, uh, we, we as a family are talking more about it. Let's think that tomorrow, I feel like leaving my job, okay? I feel that I have say one crore or two crore of rupees and I feel I can, leave my job okay so i i feel i will i will leave my job and i get some some say one crore rupees to myself and i say okay now i'm going to start some business and i say okay i'm very fond of polo making a polo team and this is going to give me a lot of money also so i go and purchase for a polo team you need horses so i say okay let me go and purchase some uh, you know, 10 to 12 good horses so that I can benefit from this team. Okay, I've left my job and I'm enjoying myself. And uh, of course, I, I want to earn more money. So I go to a vendor and I tell him, so show me your horse. So the first vendor, a vendor is the one who describes the horse as it is done on the left side. He says, ma'am, this horse is very good. It is brown in color. It is one of the finest breed in UK. It has won over 500 races. It has a rocket bolt speed. Vis-a-vis -vis that, I go to a second vendor. He shows me a picture of some 25 to 30 horses and says, ma'am, the power, I repeat, underline bold italics, the power of each horse is so on and so forth. So the first horse power is 0.5. The second horse is 0.9. The third one is 0.3. Now you choose what you want to take. Now, in the second case, because there is a magnitude given to the power, okay? So 
you know, uh, when we say narrative review of literature, when we say narrative review of literature, it means narration. Okay. Attitude impacts intention. So and so said, attitude impacts intention. So and so research said, attitude. This is narrative review. That's a normal research paper. In a systematic literature review, we give a magnitude, we give a power to each study. Imagine it's, 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 it's a study already done and we start giving a power or we assign a number to it. That number process, assigning a number to a study is meta-analysis. So these 25, 30 horses that you see, they are not horses, they are your research papers you have collected from the past 20 years. They are of all sizes, they are of all colors, they are of all breeds, okay? So there will be papers with a very small sample size, 60. There will be papers which have a huge sample size, say 1200. Varied horses, every horse or every paper will have a power. We will note down the power, do a meta-analysis calculation, come up to an overall consolidated summary power. And then go at the top floor of our building, okay, stand on the tank and say, listen, I have summarized the past 20 years of research on a particular topic, say for example, green marketing. Okay, so that is SLR, but the process of SLR uh, isn't that easy, okay? So before I explain to you technically what is the difference between narrative and systematic review, okay, before this slide, let me show you a narrative review. See, this is the review that you generally, you generally see. All right, so uh, this, this, this is the review that you uh, generally see. And um, um, just, just, just uh, read out the review. I mean, this is this is what you normally see in a paper or a dissertation or anywhere. So just, just read out the review. How many authors are over here? How many authors? Let me count. Cavillan is there. McCarthy is there. Krishna is there. Jumko is there. Uh, again, Krishna has been repeated and loud. So we have primarily five authors. If you have written this paragraph, and this is narrative review, remember the horse? It is very good. It has a rocket ball speed, X, Y, Z, no magnitudes assigned. Now, if I ask you that, how did you come to these, uh, you know, um, how, how did you come to these five authors or how did you select these five authors? You will say, ma'am, they are probably the most famous. Or you say, ma'am, it's coincidence. Or you will say, ma'am, I got a hand on only these papers. But in SLR and meta-analysis, in, in SLR specifically, we work on at least 100 authors. We consolidate the finding. If, if social media is the topic, because it's the topic of the, of the uh, review over here also, we consolidate at least 100 authors who have spoken about social media and say attitude of the student. Right, so that is the power of a of a of a SLR vis-a-vis a normal review. So now, if I come to my previous slide, uh, the difference between a narrative review and a systematic review. Let me take the major points: is that narrative review is more qualitative. A systematic review could be qualitative as well as quantitative. When it becomes quantitative it is called meta-analysis. I'm repeating, narrative review is only qualitative. Systematic literature review could be qualitative or it could be quantitative too. So that the, the point, second last point, that statistical analysis, okay, there can be no statistical analysis done in a normal review paper. But there is a chance of statistical analysis when we come to an SLR or a meta-analysis paper. Okay, so review papers generally because they are, uh, you know, from the uh, secondary data, so they 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 don't uh, really do a statistical analysis. A uh, research question in a narrative review is generic, but in a systematic review, it becomes uh, a priori and it becomes very, very defined. I'll give you examples of this, examples of each of the points, so nothing to worry. Um, the, the, uh, the, the research methods, 
okay when you are doing a narrative review you might just take three papers or five papers i just showed you an example where the methods of of calculating what you are or or describing social media are similar but when it comes to an slr if i'm picking up 100 papers on social media obviously it 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 would be too much a chance to say that all 100 secondary data papers have the same research method okay so that's about uh, the difference okay this is the normal review and now let's come and do an slr okay forget the normal review there are as far as i know and the review papers that i'm getting every every researcher today is working on slr systematic literature review people i i don't get review papers nowadays uh at least in the a grade journals the review papers that i get i do, i've stopped getting review papers basic narrative review papers i only get slr papers now okay of course in in journals which are not that good maybe a review paper goes through but slr is coming up in a very very big way now let me start an slr or a systematic literature review okay questions i will take at 7 please hold your questions i will take them but i'll take at 7 okay so please hold on let me finish my content meanwhile if you have a question please list it down each and every one's question i'll take up at 7 okay so i have a, a content to finish i'll finish it by 7 and take up questions now um what is an slr or what are the steps of an slr number 1 determine the research question now before i go through these steps you 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 can see it's a very exhaustive step and when i go one by one and open up each objective or open up each step uh, from my papers which i have done on slr or my experience of slr you will find it's an exhaustive process so where a narrative review is just a chapter in a research paper systematic literature review is the whole research paper by itself i'm repeating where the, the 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 review that you do is just chapter number 2 of your paper or just chapter number 2 of your phd and slr is your full phd or is your full 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 research paper okay because it's a very very exhaustive process after this there is no scope of doing any quantitative because this is a huge paper by itself so systematic literature review and meta analysis idly came from the medical field i know there are people around from the medical field also so when i'm doing the calculations which i'll start tomorrow and day after i'll take into consideration that i have management students i have social science students i have medical um, line students also i'll take into consideration that so let me come to this first step determine a research question must be looking very simple to you generally in a norm review paper how do we write a research question it's very simple how will social media affect attitude that's it just a one line now see how we write a research question in an slr paper i'll show you a sample paper also so um, in 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 a uh, in in a uh, in a typical slr paper we have to define the research objective in four values in in four uh, you know domains okay the first domain is population intervention comparison outcome this is called pico it is not that famous in social science papers although even in social science papers ideally when you do an slr you should be writing a pico as a research question and not that line the the objective of the research paper is how social media impacts attitude no you should not be doing that so you have to give a pico population intervention comparison outcome now let me explain this to you with an incident which happened with me now there was this one a phd student of mine she got very enthusiastic she said mama i want to write an slr i said go make a pico first that was anyways the first step so i said okay go and make a pico so she came back to me with a pico she said ma'am i am going to uh, you know study luxury products okay i'm going to study a luxury brand and uh, factors affecting purchase intention of luxury brands as a well and good great what's your population ma'am my population is young ethically conscious consumers of india 
not India actually, young ethical conscious consumers, because here the papers are going to come from the world. So you can't say young ethical conscious consumers of India. No, you will make it general. Young ethical conscious consumers all over the world. I said, fine. So now when this girl collects secondary data, 100 papers or 50 papers, she will only collect the studies which have been done on young ethical conscious consumers. In case there is a study which has been done on a 40 plus age group or a 60 plus age group, she will not include that study set in her SLR. Number one. Let's go to number two, intervention. Which is that one moderator or which is that one factor that these hundred papers have not studied, but you are going to study? Okay, so see, there, there's always something in introduction, uh, chapter number one, where we say gap of research. Okay, so you don't just list all the hundred papers, you have to bring in an intervention. You have to say, I'm going to study these hundred papers from the context of religiosity. So I'll be dividing these papers into different religions and seeing that does religion impact so-and-so, so-and-so. Okay, so intervention was decided. I'm going to do the same process for medical students also. So please hold on. I'm doing this process for social science and management students. I'm going to do this process for the medical students also. Just give me one minute. Comparison, okay. She said, I am going to compare two groups in my study, males versus females, okay? So she collected papers of all young ethical conscious consumers, okay? Uh, where an impact of religiosity was shown on their purchase intention. And she started comparing the males with the females. How she compared it, it was technically done by an analysis called subgroup analysis, which I'm going to start, say, uh, tomorrow or day after, right? Step number four, outcome. After doing all this, I asked her, what's your outcome? So as managers, when we write papers, or as academicians, when we write paper, the purpose is not to, uh, the, the, the purpose is not to, you know, just write an academic paper and get promotion. Ideally, the purpose is to give something to the manager so that they can, they can improve their marketing skills or financial skills or whatever. So she said, I asked her, I said, what's your outcome? And she said, ma'am, my outcome is that animals are being killed because of luxury. I said, so ma'am, I want to avoid killing of animals. I said that is, uh, we, we, we are management people. You have to give me a management based outcome, dear. What you are giving me is more of a sociology based outcome anthropology based outcome, emotionality based outcome, give me a managerial outcome. So she says, ma'am, I'll get back to you in two days. Then she comes back, collects data, studies and comebacks. And she says, ma'am, in luxury brands, the young consumers are getting conscious. They're getting conscious that this material is made after killing an animal and they are disowning the brands. And the brands also are very much worried. Brands like Burberry are very much worried and they have stopped using original fur. So this is my study. This is the managerial outcome it will give. It will throw a light on this aspect from management. So I said, okay, go forward and do an SLR. Now let me take this example for a medical student. Medicine students, I think the biggest, uh, I don't know how many of you uh, would, would um, you know, uh, even study vaccines or the effect of vaccine. But when I think of a medical or a healthcare problem, research problem, I think the biggest is the vaccine. Biggest is the vaccine. So let me do a PICO for you. I'm giving you an example. Of course, your could be different. I'm just giving you an example from my side. Population. Oh, okay. Which is the age group which is, which, 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 for which there is no vaccine right now? The age group for which there is no vaccine right now and we could have a third wave of COVID is the teenagers or should I say children below 18. There is no vaccine yet for them. 
there is a research problem there is a research gap okay so population what is my population what am i going to check the vaccine on what am i going to experiment with which is my population my population will be say children of 10 to 18 years 10 to 17 years specify specify what are you going to do an slr on intervention covid vaccine okay comparison okay maybe you could make two groups one is the very young children say 10 to 14 the other are the 14 to 18 maybe these could be the two groups age wise maybe you could make a comparison as scientists or as people from the science domain you could collect papers which have done ex experiments on 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 these uh, uh children or teenage group so what you do is you take two groups uh, groups you compare two groups one is especially in the science domain when we do comparison it's not male female and age wise it is comparing two groups one is called the control group okay and one is called the experimental group the medical students will understand this because most of your papers are going to be the secondary data paper are going to be based on experimentation technique and the experimentation technique is generally done on two groups you will have the mean standard deviation etc for these two groups and all the papers when it comes to covid vaccine tried on same children okay that is your data which you have to collect and then compare so comparison over here will be control group and the experimental group outcome why are we doing this why are we doing this because we want to see that if at all there are studies of course not 20 years old studies of course here we'll just get probably uh, not not only this year uh, there was a uh, sars virus in 2002 also i think again somewhere in between so so i can't do the study only on covid but i can definitely do it on the sars virus okay for the past 20 years okay so i can see that if a vaccine was given to a to a teenager or was given to a small child was it effective or not so what's my outcome my outcome is that through the study of 100 papers where a vaccine was ever experimented on a child i want to finally come out with a result and say okay this is the best vaccine for children go ahead next year give it to everyone when it comes to covid okay so that is the aim when it comes to medical sciences the medical medicine people have to be more careful uh when when it comes to slr and meta analysis than the social scientists okay because uh, what what happens to a social science person okay i am studying the impact of attitude on intention big deal if i get a wrong value it's it's, it's not taking someone's life but in medical and healthcare you have to be very very conscious that the results that you report in systematic literature review or meta analysis could could actually take someone's life okay so the precision level is very very high in medical studies slr meta analysis vis-a-vis the social sciences and management i hope the pq is clear so let me go back to next step we have just done step number 1 yet and i have to finish all nine steps by 7 so determine the research question i've just done one step okay acha uh, before that just to um uh, change a little let me show you a sample paper also side by side because you know just theoretical learning would not be good learning so this is a sample paper i have okay it's from the management domain i could share one from medical domain also but i just want to show you uh, this is a uh, paper Uh, from a good journal and i just want to show you i'm going to the i'm just browsing down to the paragraph of piku so this is the piku all right this is the piku okay uh, so this is you know look look at how this person it's not just four lines he's written okay can everybody see uh, can everybody see the screen Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can see. Okay, great, great. So, at any point you can't see, just let me. So, he's written the population is going to be psychiatric or medical condition people. My intervention is going to be so and so, so and so. 
my comparison is going to be so and so so and so and my outcome is going to be so and so 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 you know he's he's actually defined a piku uh and just just go back to your normal papers if you remember that one line that we used to write about uh, uh research method uh, research uh, objective remember to prove that attitude has an impact on intention right so this is about piku now let me go to the second step at every step i will show you my work also and i will show you related published papers also so that you know exactly where these steps are fitting in in research papers okay so my second step assemble a research team uh by the end of these three days you will come to know and um, uh, in fact in in when when i do a paper on quantitative analysis or structural equational modeling i finish the paper in barely one to two months <coughs> okay most of the time is taken by data collection rest time analysis and review and all that i finish in two months the last two papers i did on meta analysis it took me eight months each and in one paper i had a team of some eight people in the second paper i had a team of four people still it took me seven to eight months and there's a third paper which is going on which is going on from an year and there's a team of nine people i'll tell you the problem here or why you need a team over here you are consolidating research from the past 20 years when you type a topic say covid vaccine or when you type a topic say social media you will get some 10000 results on scopus or proquest or cochrane for medical sciences it's cochrane database so you will get some 10000 results on that topic how will you consolidate how will you manage 10000 it's not possible for one person that is the reason i need a team number one number two when one person selects paper so from that 10000 i'll show you the process we'll come to 600 from those 600 we'll come to 100 from those 100 we'll come to 20 don't worry i'll show you the process but in this whole process if one person does it there will be a bias the reason why slr came up was because people were having a bias in the review and why were they having a bias in the review was because they only used to cite people who are very 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 famous but in an slr we cite people who might not be famous i mean those those 100 papers that i'm going to include might be unpublished papers might be dissertation might be conference proceedings so i'm not biased in slr so when i assemble a team and three people are collecting papers or selecting papers after collection the bias goes away you have to have a research team number 3 determine if there is a registered or published systematic review on your topic let's do it and see let's do it so i i am i'm um sorry yeah so i am sharing with you I'll give me a minute let me open i i'll do this on google scholar but you're not supposed to be using google scholar or even citing google scholar please you have to cite good database like scopus or proquest or epsco or cochrane sitenet etc so I, although i'm doing this on uh, google scholar because i i really don't have an access to those and uh, the access of those is available only in very very uh, you know uh, management institutes which are very very Okay, so I'm just. Uh, can everybody see the Google Scholar screen? Suppose this is the Scopus or Web of Science or EBSCO or Cochrane database. Suppose I've opened it. Yes, ma'am. It says, please list if there is a registered protocol, which means you have to find out. See, you are going to consolidate the research of twenty years. First, at least find out has somebody already consolidated it or not. because if somebody has consolidated it in 2020 there is no scope of an slr in 2021 so let me see i am from the management domain let me see i want to work on a topic called impulsive buying okay and i say impulsive buying meta analysis please show me all the papers database 
and show me papers since 2017 because I want to see the latest papers. So just see, I have a meta-analytical paper in 2020. I have two meta-analytical papers in 2020 on impulse mine. And look at the third search. I have one paper on meta-analytical study on impulse mining in 2019. So if these, th these authors have already consolidated what was there about impulse buying those 10,000 papers in the past 20 years, what am I going to do? Okay, so um, if, if I write a paper on impulse buying in 2021 and I send it to the editor, the editor will say, X, Y, Z, I have had an experience with the editor returned my paper and said, listen, and he, and, and he cited this paper. He cited this paper. He actually wrote down that a year at all 2020 has already done a meta-analysis on impulsive buying. Why are you doing it again? Or what is different in your paper from a year? And it's very difficult to justify. It's very difficult because, you know, if you justify that his paper is wrong, you are saying he's consolidated the wrong results. Okay, and, 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 and these are papers with A grade journals. So Journal of Strategic Manage Management, A grade. Journal of Academy of Marketing, A star. Okay, another RAUSP management, which is Emerald. So these three papers are from A grade journals. So you, you can imagine the level of study. You can't criticize them and say, no, he was not right. I'm doing the right thing in 2021. Not possible. All right, let me do the same thing for the medical example that I gave. Okay. COVID vaccine for teen ages. All right. So uh, there are papers on this, but what I want to see is, is there a meta-analysis paper? Yes. Vaccines to prevent COVID-19, it says. A systematic literature review is there, but vaccines for teenagers there is still no paper. There is another paper, uh, see this one, okay, which says COVID vaccine for pregnant women. Although this is a normal paper, normal paper made on primary data and not a meta-analysis paper. But the first paper is a problem because it's being done on SARS COVID. It seems to be a systematic literature review and it seems to be published in 2020. So now my question to the audience would be, this, this is what we call a published protocol. So if somebody, would you want to work on vaccines to prevent COVID-19? Now, somebody has already listed the past, whatever year's research there was in 2020 already. So what should I work on? I should now work on, say, vaccines for children because I don't see any, any case study let me change the keyword. You will also have to do this. Uh, Somebody is not on mute. Can you please go on mute here? I can hear a kid. Uh, yeah. So let me do this. All right. So there. Okay. Yes. You can't even do it on children. Look at this paper. It says, and it is a 2021 paper. Very, very latest. Yeah. You can't do. It says, uh, epidemiology, uh, uh, sorry, I'm not a medical person, of COVID-19 infection in young children under five. An SLR and a meta-analysis. So now, when it comes to children under five, can I do an SLR on COVID-19 infection? I can't. Okay, at least, of course, I'll have to open the paper and specifically see what does he mean by epidemiology. Maybe I am a psychiatrist and my area is different, that I'll have to check with keywords. That, that I leave to you people because you are specialists in your domain. But as far as I can see, I would not go for, for uh, uh, you know, a meta-analysis of a COVID-19 infection in younger children under five, at least in this topic, epidemiology. I'll not go for it. Why should I go for it? Somebody has already listed the, uh, the, the, the findings in 2021. Right, so this is my point number three. You have to do this in your respective databases. It could be Scopus, uh, it could be Cochrane for medical science students. So, so this is point number three. Determine if there are any registered or in process or published systematic reviews on your topic. And if there are, please do not go for an SLR. 
right uh, point number four develop and register a protocol for the study now what do you mean by a protocol this word protocol is coming again and again and again ma'am we cannot see the screen no oh i'm sorry it's okay i'm sorry maybe you forgot to share screen yeah i switched from google and then i forgot and i'll be share uh, please do tell me like this because you know i'll be sharing uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 please thank you so yeah so i have done uh, step number 1 2 3 now step number 4 develop and register a protocol for the study uh, and what is a protocol now forget medical sciences forget management forget anthropology forget maths forget english from whichever domain you are just forget it what do you mean by a protocol forget those formal papers also and your institute and the fact that you are in an institute forget that protocol is very simple and do have been taught protocols from childhood all of us have been taught i'll i'll give an example of one of the protocols that all of us have, i i i guess all of us have been taught when you visit someone's house the host is going to offer you some snacks the first time she offers you say a no no thank you auntie i don't want it the second time she offers you take one piece of whatever she's offering you don't take a handful number 2 the third fourth time she asks you to take something out of curtsy do not pick it up that first and last piece should be the thing that you should be having this was a protocol which we learned during childhood now what is the protocol for an slr paper and why a protocol here look look at look at this did we have a protocol for this did we have a rule to write this no but in slr you have a protocol because slr come from medical sciences so protocol is a predefined set of steps to define well stated limits so it is a step wise procedure where we define the limits to our research so i say i am collecting papers from the 20 years past 20 years in this 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 domain and i am including this set of papers and i am excluding this set of papers so the papers which are excluded become a gap for future researchers okay that is why you have to give a protocol it is like saying listen if this is a whole stream of study this 10% small pie chart i have done and this 90% is available to you but you have to very specifically define this 10 person rather in an slr or a or a meta analysis paper the chapter number 3 research method is the largest chapter whereas in a normal paper where we do a primary data analysis or or put a structural equational modeling the rm chapter is barely i think 1000 words or so but in a paper a 9000 or an 8000 word paper the research methodology in an slr or a meta analysis paper is at least 3000 words and i'll explain why let me explain the prisma to you and then i'm going to take you to the paper to show how the prisma is reported so a prisma is a predefined series of steps to define well stated limits what i include what i exclude let me see how we do it now this is a typical prism okay this diagram has to be given so you know it's not as simple as uh, it, it was back here you know you selected any five authors any five studies and said okay review is finished it's not like that here when you go to a database so when you go to scopus or when you go to epsco and when you go to cochrane on your particular topic of course the keyword is very very crucial over here i also had a set of keywords that i showed you in 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 my search also you will have to write those keywords in the paper so you know you have to tell the editor that these were the two keywords i typed and this was the result which came out and you know it's please do not write it for the heck of writing there was another paper uh, which where i got a review and he said i typed this keyword on scopus and you are saying you got 6000 results i got only four so he challenged that 
he challenged he actually used that keyword on the uh, you know i had written i access scopus in epsco he checked it also so please don't uh, please do this genuinely or else you'll get caught so uh, suppose i go to any database of course i'll not be doing one database i'll be doing at least two to three database okay because as i said you have to consolidate all the papers in the past 20 years so you will have to show to the editor that you've done an authentic search so i will say i've gone to three databases i found some 6638 articles okay i removed 6000 articles on the basis of title so you know you're not going to read these 6000 uh, articles even if you're a team of four people or five people reading all 6000 articles is out of the scope you'll take ages to write a paper you'll take five years to write a paper by then somebody else will come with a published protocol so those 6000 articles are screened on the basis of title now here it is it is it is the examination of the researcher that is the title appropriate or or not right so if the title is not appropriate i chuck it out i exclude it so on the basis of title he says i removed 6000 papers i was left with 1395 papers in these 1395 papers because they were collected from three article databases and they might have been collected by three team members I removed 198 duplicate papers because there could be a published research which is available on Scopus. The same paper is available on EBSCO. The same paper is available on ProQuest also. So there will be repetitions. The best method of doing it is that all these 1395 papers, you please save in a database. So please save it in a Mendeley or a Zotero so that finding out duplications becomes easier. Okay, doing it manually, you'll go mad. So please save it on a Mendeley. Mendeley, the moment you save these papers on Mendeley, put, in, put them into a folder, say meta-analysis of COVID vaccine, suppose. It will show you in two minutes that 198 duplicates are there and it will give you an option of removing duplicates. And uh, in, in minutes, you'll be able to remove the duplicates. Okay, now 1197 articles are left after removing duplicates. Now I start screening the abstract. I've still not read the whole paper. 1100 papers, reading all papers is not possible for three people or four people in a team. So I screen now only the abstract. When I screen the abstract, I find out some 821 articles are not of any use to me. I exclude them. I'm left with 415 articles. These 415 articles, now I will fully screen. Fully screen meaning I'm going to read the full paper. Okay. When I read the full paper, not I, the whole team of three, four people. When I read the full paper, I see 319 papers, uh, 319 articles have to be excluded during full screening. Okay. And I'm left with 100 articles. Out of these 100 also, I see that there's a bias coming up. For example, for example, um, I write on sustainability and Dr. Russell Belk is very, very famous in sustainability. Dr. Russell Belk, Scott and Vittel, Sheeran, these are the common names of people who are most cited when it comes to sustainability. Now, I get some, uh, 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 suppose I, I get some, sorry, where am I? Yeah, I get some, um, 100 papers where, you know, some 50 papers are only on these three authors. So this means there has been a bias in selection. I remove those 60 and I'm left with 40 articles. Okay. Um, while full screening, okay, if I have to go for, now when you screen these 415 articles, this is the time when you decide, am I going to go for an SLR or am I going to go for a meta-analysis? So if you're going for an SLR, these 100 articles are more than enough. And you can start an SLR, systematic literature review paper with these 100 articles. They are a mix of qualitative articles and quantitative articles. But if you're going for a meta-analysis, 
in these 100 articles, you will have to remove the qualitative papers and only keep the quantitative papers. And the quantitative papers from 100 papers in totality, maybe only 40 articles are quantitative. And they can give me useful data for meta-analysis. I keep them. Again, when I review them, I see, okay, suppose I need, I'll come to values that you need in meta-analysis. So suppose you need standard deviation or mean, et cetera, okay, or correlation to calculate meta-analytical terms. Those values have to be there in these 40 papers, okay? Now, sometimes when the value is not there, what we do is we write to the author. We write to the author and say, sir, um, these values are, uh, you know, uh, not there or, or can you please send us the values? If he sends well and good, if he doesn't send, we'll have to remove those papers also. And now we are left with 31 papers for meta-analysis, okay? Now, if you understood the process, let me show you two papers now. Two sample papers I'm showing you. I'll first show you the sample paper on which I showed you Piku so that I can explain the meta-analysis part. This is a meta-analysis paper and I'm going to show you an SLR paper also. Okay, purely qualitative also. This is a, this is a, so he says, and, and look at the research methodology chapter. Just a second. So this is method chapter, chapter number three. Look at how huge it is. Let me take you through it. All this is research methodology. We have still not started findings and analysis. Still not started. Still not started. This is the results chapter. So you saw how big the research methodology chapter is when it comes to meta-analysis. Definitely, our normal research paper methods chapter is not that big. Thanks to the complications of SLR and meta-analysis, the chapter is huge. Now, um, okay, yeah, so I have to go on the Prisma. So he's reported a Prisma. Okay, let me show you the diagram first, and then I'll come to how he has written it theoretically. So one is, so this is his Prisma diagram. Okay, this is his Prisma diagram. It is very clear from the diagram, although you just don't throw a diagram to the editor, you have to write it also what you have done and I'll just show it to you. I'll read it out to you. But uh, this is a Prisma diagram where he says, as far as that, what you can understand from this is that five databases were used. Medline, Scientinfo, Web of Science, ProQuest and Sinhao. I hope I pronounced them right. He has listed the number of titles he got from each database. So Medline gave him 4724 titles, okay? What keyword he used for these titles, even that he must have written. It's that specific. Duplications removed, X, Y, Z removed, and he's left with 22 articles. Because he was going for a meta-analysis, he could not stop at the previous step where he had 561 articles. Because these 561 articles fully screened had qualitative and quantitative papers. But because his paper is on meta-analysis and a statistical study, he had to go for only quantitative. And that is when he came to 22 papers. Okay. Uh, the prisma is not just to be drawn, but also explained. So here you go. He says... The electronic search strategy retrieved 10,238 unique records. Now, this is all five databases taken together. All five databases taken together. Okay. They were thoroughly screened and we came to 31 articles for meta-analysis. Okay. Now, he says he screened journal articles along with dissertations. Okay. So, he's just not gone for published research. Okay, uh, further, a few things that he has is explained on the top. Let me, uh, inclusion and exclusion. So I'm, I'm, when I explain the PRISMA or the protocol for systematic review and meta-analysis, I have to explain to you the inclusion and exclusion criteria also, because that's the next step to SLR and let me complete it right here. Okay, so in inclusion, he says, 
reference list of all studies okay reference list of all studies whichever i got searched for being included in this paper database he also states that i specially went to proquest to include unpublished papers okay um to remove the bias he says two authors independently pre-screen the paper okay and then he says just a minute yeah okay. inclusion yeah um okay any study which had a multiple effect size was was eligible for inclusion now here he means to say the statistical value this you will understand after you finished third day uh, anything else uh, in inclusion no so that's about inclusion okay now this is about a meta analytical paper chapter number 3 now let me show you an slr paper he in an slr paper he will not stop at so this is uh, wait let me share it Share screen. Yeah. Now this is an SLR paper. It's not a meta-analytical paper. It has no statistical analysis. It's a pure SLR paper. And by the way, SLR is the larger domain. Meta-analysis is a part of SLR. Okay. Some people feel that meta-analysis is the broader domain, and SLR is no. But SLR is a broader domain, and meta-analysis is a part of SLR. So, uh, Journal of Cleaner Production is an A-star journal. And this is a paper of 2017, so it's not very old. And he's done an SLR on green marketing. Okay, forget what the topic is. Don't just bother about the topic. Let me go to his table. So this is table number one. He says he took three databases, EBSCO, Scopus, and Web of Science. Uh, he has listed in this table and also written in the text that I have included only papers in English language. Number one, inclusion principle. He also says that my data ranges from all years to 2015. So even if this paper is published in 2017, he has clearly written that I have excluded papers after 2015. So in this way, he has given the inclusion and exclusion criteria for the selected papers. Further, he has made a table to say that these are the number of papers that I got. When I typed the keyword green marketing, I got 298 papers from EBSCO, 300 from Scopus, and 223 from Web of Science. Needless to say, this is going to be cross-checked by the editor. So there is no use, uh, you know, manipulating data. Okay. And uh, whenever you type green marketing on Scopus, Okay, even if there's a lapse of one year in making the paper and submitting to the editor, this 291 cannot suddenly change to 500. And this 291 cannot suddenly change to 40. Okay, so some, some difference will be there, but the editors are smart. They will, they will come to know where you've manipulated. So he's given keywords. He said, these are my four keywords. Okay, you can go for three, four keywords. He's listed each and every uh, paper and how many uh, paper came from each and every database. He's given the total net. Okay. So he had some 410 papers in all. Okay. Uh, let me come to his prisma. Okay. This is his prisma. He says he had these many papers, duplicates for 543, results 410, abstract not relevant 249. He's done the whole process and he says I came to 114 papers and he stopped here. He did not analyze these 114 papers for statistical values because this is not a meta-analysis paper. It's an SLR paper. Okay. So he has done a study of 114 papers. So what study has he done? What are his findings? This is one of his findings. He says that when it comes to green marketing or economic marketing, these are the journals out of those 114 where the maximum papers were published out of those 114. This is one of his findings. Further, 
He has shown the evolution of this concept, green marketing, eco-friendly marketing, etc., over the years. And he has shown it on the basis of these 114 papers only. This is not a cut, copy, pasted graph. It's a graph which has been constructed on the basis of those 114 papers, the year in which they were published, and the number of articles he got in that year out of these 114. Okay. Further, he has analyzed the subjects of those 114 papers. So this is a true analysis of the past 20 years of research done on the topic of green marketing. This is actually a consolidation of 20 years of work done on green marketing. What were the major topics and how many? So the, the, you see there is a numeric number also. Okay, so the bar charts are showing how many studies. So if I say, and you know, these, these SLR studies are very good for me to find out a gap. For example, if I'm a marketing person and the maximum study in green marketing has been done on the green marketing mix, I would never write a primary data paper on this topic. I would say the past literature is saturated with it. But if I take up a topic like positioning and differentiation, that's topic number four or the bar number four, there are very few papers in the past 20 years. So it shows that there is a gap and I can fill up this gap. So, uh, you know, actually I can cite this paper and say, as per so-and-so, so-and-so, there is a dearth of positioning concept papers in green marketing. And I can find out a gap from SLR paper. So there's another thing. <clears throat> Let me go further. Yeah. He has also, starting from 1976, which was his first paper, first paper as in the oldest paper that he found out, he has consolidated the major change in definitions of green marketing. Okay, not all 114 papers will define green marketing or sustainable marketing or eco-marketing, those four keywords he used. But the major ones who did, he has listed that from 1976 to 2013. So, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's almost like how many? 40 years of data? Almost 40 years? Papers 40 years old? Sometimes getting a paper 30 year old becomes so difficult. Right? So, he's consolidated that. And then, of course, he's... Um, He's finished off with writing conclusions. Look at it, it's all qualitative. So this is a basic uh, <clears throat> SLR paper. He's finally listed a, uh, in a way, a conceptual model, okay, out of those 114 papers on the basis of areas in which they have been studied. And uh, he's finished the paper. That's it, appendix. So he's finished the paper. There is not a single meta-analytical or statistical tool being used over here. But but uh, even if I have to suggest a first year PhD anything, I would suggest them to write an SLR paper. What's there in an SLR paper? There are no technicalities. There's a lot of hard work. Yes, there's a lot of hard work. 10,000 and then coming to 114 and then reading 114, 100 times to get these concepts, to, to segregate them journal-wise to segregate them topic-wise, to segregate them definition-wise and then summarize them. Yes, it takes a lot of effort, but at least you cannot, you know, you, you cannot crib and say that I don't know statistics, so I can't write a research paper. This is a paper from an A-star, uh, you know, journal just five years ago, right? So this is an SLR paper. I'll be sending you all this material, so my PPTs will be with you. Uh, these sample papers will be with you. Uh, let me share the PPT and quickly uh, wrap up the uh, SLR because, yeah. So where were we? Uh, okay, let me come back to my, yeah, 11 steps. So I was on step number three, no registered protocol. Step number four, uh, uh, develop and register. Okay, uh, protocol is Prisma. I've done that, made a diagram, explain the diagram. Step number five, Show what you've included, show what you've excluded. I've done that. I included papers which were in English. I excluded papers which suppose uh, did not have the four keywords, okay? I excluded papers which were, uh, you know, suppose 
I, I excluded papers which were not published. Whatever you have done, you have to list over here. Someone not on mute? Everybody, please mute yourself. Yeah. So, uh, step number five is done. Step number six, select studies to include, ba include based on predefined inclusion and exclusion. Now that I've described them, my 114 studies in SLR paper that I showed you and 22 studies in meta-analysis. They have been included in the data set and they are all secondary studies based on inclusion ex exclusion criteria. Select studies to include, okay? Extract and analyze data. Now this is where meta-analysis starts, okay? Or, or even in an SLR, we do extract and analyze data. I have shown you that out of those 114 papers, he has extracted and analyzed data, but that data is more qualitative. When I go to meta-analysis tomorrow, we will be extracting and analyzing data from 22 papers, okay? The, the, the way the other sample paper that I showed you, and we will extract and analyze data from statistical values that are given in those papers. Interpret and results for publication. So interpret what you've done. So he's, uh, he's also you know, made graphs and then interpreted them and maybe shown that the, for example, one of the interpretation that I got from the graph was that uh, probably when it came to positioning as a topic, it has not been studied at all. Interpret and synthesize results for publication update review as required. So once your paper gets published in 2021, you have updated the review. Maybe somebody had done a meta-analysis five years back. That's okay. That's old now. You have updated the review in 2021 if your paper gets published. Right? So this is the whole process. I hope... Um, Adam, uh, uh, there yeah. is a doubt. Uh, uh, there was a... I, I read a paper in which meta-analysis was done with only 11 papers. Is it okay? I, I come to doubt, sir. Give me one minute. I'm just concluding. Give me one more minute, I'm concluding. 15 okay, minutes, okay, okay. even more, only for doubts. Just give me one minute. Okay, okay. So um, what you have learned over here is that literature review is just biased. It's qualitative. It's not definite. It's, 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 it summarizes broadly a topic. Okay, suppose cancer treatment. Okay, it broadly summarizes a topic. Systematic review, specific clinical question when it comes to medical sciences, specific social science question when it comes to management. For example, for medical students, there's an example also, is vitamin C or chemotherapy a better cancer treatment in patients above the age of 40? So we are very, very specific. I'm going to only take secondary data papers where there are patients experimented for vitamin C over the age of 40, period. I'm not going to look at the broader aspect of it. I've become very, very narrow, okay? Systematic review has an inclusion and exclusion criteria, which literature review does not have. It's biased. Meta-analysis is the statistical part of, of systematic literature review. It's a subset of SLR. SLR is a broader term Meta-analysis is, is a narrower term. It is, it is a statistical analysis of the papers and it comes under SLR, okay? So uh, what we have got at the end of the day is all these horses, a few tall, a few short. We'll get papers which will be done in UK, in Europe, in India, in Pakistan. We will get papers which will be, uh, so look at the color of the horses, white, brown, black, etc. We are going to get papers where the research method is going to be structural equational mo modeling, correlation. Maybe if you're doing an SLR, you'll get a qualitative paper, conceptual paper, review papers. We are going to get all sorts of horses. All we have to do is we have to get together these horses and make a team and finally report a final interpretation from the summarization of the past 20 years of such studies. Okay, so that is SLR and analysis. And now I can come to doubts. And although today Madam, was a critical uh, session. Mad yes, we can Madam, that. Uh, that is what, can I ask the doubt now? Yes, 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 yeah. sir. Please Madam, there was, first. There was a meta-analysis with only 11 papers. Is it possible like that? Very few uh, papers, 11. Sir, uh, I need to know the journal. Uh, uh, it was a uh, journal of uh, uh, 
see see it is a c journal forget uh, it sir throw it away i mean with all due regards okay don't, don't that read is, such paper don't yeah, read such paper. that is one thing madam it another thing is seen. yeah okay uh, another thing madam if it is a meta analysis paper uh, should we also do slr not necessary right if it is meta sir, uh, in i I'll, i'll explain in uh, a meta analysis paper the uh, you know chapter number 2 generally is slr pardon Uh, okay. Chapter number two is uh, not basic review; it is SLR review only. Okay, no. If you are doing a meta analysis paper, should you also do an SLR? No, 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 not uh, no. I just showed you a sample paper. He's just based okay. his research on twenty-two okay. papers. He's okay, not taken one hundred and fourteen more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but there is no minimum figure for meta analysis. No, minimum. no, no, sir. There is no, sir. Uh, I go by you know in some things, nothing is written in the. books so in meta analysis books that i have read one by borenstein one and hunter and spit it's not yeah. written how many papers should you take some okay. things you learn from a grade journals okay. if i have any doubt on what is the number let me share that with you any a grade journal i have not seen with less than 40 papers for meta analysis okay and a grade journal i showed you 114 so above 100 i would take for slr okay. nothing less than that i'm planning for an a grade C grade, so you take eleven, twelve. Okay. To do properly, not do properly, anything uh, will be. Okay. Okay. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah. Yeah. The floor is open to the questions. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, I have a question. Like yes, uh, in SLR or meta analysis, we don't go by aim specific or aim and objective. So, is the interpretation uh, like subjected to bias? Because I had seen like green marketing, you had papers on green marketing, and in that uh, uh, the way he had presented was uh, he presented uh, how many articles were published on the same topic, and then again. Uh, the definition part and uh, the gaps so uh, there are so many de other details we have in that paper so is it possible like uh, when we uh, read the papers we come to know like what we want to just uh, show in our paper so is it subject uh -huh. to bias no it's not ma'am there were four keywords he used no ma'am my uh, question is like the interpretation part because we'll have so many I mean, papers can't be biased now. see when my 114 papers have not have come from all over the world haven't been a biased selection i'm assuming i'm assuming if that hasn't been a biased selection how i'll show you the paper again no no not and not exactly the term bias you know haan ji getting uh, yeah. like like what uh, we want to present to that paper like what we want oh, to exactly oh, show you you mean to say analysis You may yeah, say analysis, analysis can differ. Part. Yes, 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 can... yes, yes, yes. That can happen. So there has to be a consensus between all the three people who are doing like what we have to show in this paper. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. It can. Because we it don't have differ. any aim and objective now. Because initially we have a broader topic and the search engine and the search strategy. So it all depends upon yes. us, like what we want to show after reading that paper. Yeah. So, ma'am, that is not decided after collecting the paper. That is decided in PICO itself. Okay. And one more okay. question, ma'am. When we yeah. were talking about the COVID vaccine, so none of the paper uh, paper was exactly on COVID vaccine. Like you had uh, done a search uh -huh. when we searched for that was epidemiology of the uh, COVID vaccine. So. Can ma'am, um, ma COVID vaccine is a very very generic term, something like social media. Yeah. So whenever you get a paper on, let me try it for social media. Let me explain you this way. Can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes. If I plainly type social media, I'll never get a paper only on social media. Okay, it will say yeah. teen social media. It will say suppose impact of something on social media. Generally, I get you know see. Uh, uh social business evaluation and social media language learning and social media so papers will never be on absolutely one topic they will be related to something else and that's absolutely fine no but when we talk specifically about the age group or the population so in a search engine those words should be mentioned like when we talk about covid vaccine in children so for uh, मतलब forget about this that uh, we have a uh, SLR on this topic yeah but uh, if 
when we uh, um, want to do this, like suppose there is no SLR on this topic. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a population will be a specific. Oh, theme. yes. Yes, yes. I got your point. I got your point. So you are saying that forget the meta analysis part. Are there papers enough to do a meta analysis? Is this what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Actually, if there are oh. not enough papers, like COVID vaccine is not See, started in yet. So can we just uh, make an assumption from whatsoever? No, 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 ma'am. No, no, no. You cannot do a meta analysis or a SLR. Now I have removed the word meta analysis. I have removed the word meta analysis. You can see there are so many studies which have been done on COVID-19 on children. See, so many are there. Just the title says COVID and children, COVID and children, minors and COVID. See, so there are studies. You can do an SLR. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Well, yeah, the, the, the limited uh, search was because I was typing meta-analysis. That's why. Okay. So yes. then how to choose like uh, for search, uh, how to choose those keywords exactly? Like, Ma'am, uh, when I do a meta-analysis paper, generally what I do is that I, uh, okay, I'll, I'll share one of my experience. So what I do is, and see, I have to be very clear on my research objective. Now, I want to study the impact of religiosity on purchase intention. I am a marketer. So I want to see what impacts purchase intention and I want to see if religiosity actually impacts purchase intention. So what I write is impact of religiosity on purchase intention or I write religiosity, uh, sorry, uh, I might write factors of religion impacting purchase intention. So I am getting, I see the papers are opening. They are all on religion and purchase intention. Ma'am, my question was, how do I choose the uh, keywords? Uh, that, like that, when... that, that, that is your subjective view, ma'am. That okay. nobody can answer. And, but yes, okay. you're right. That when you choose your keyword and it goes to the editor. Yeah. That is when, and when you get a review, review tells you a lot many things, ma'am. So okay. it's possible. If you're yeah. asking me that, is it possible that you might have chosen a wrong keyword? Yeah, it is yeah, very yeah. much possible, ma'am. But that is the reason, ma'am, we choose at least three, four keywords. We don't choose one. That is the reason. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, madam, could it be, yes. uh, is there be, madam, this is format, uh, how many papers or uh, should be in case of meta-analysis? Sir, how? A grade journals do not take less than 40. N not less than 40, right? Not less than 40, which means 40 papers should have the statistical value which you are using to calculate meta analysis. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, Excuse me, madam. Ask the question. Uh, okay. One person can talk. Okay. Yeah. Um, one time. So, uh, good evening, ma'am. Lovely presentation. I have a one question and one doubt. Um, so my question is that uh, if I do, uh, if I have done uh, the search in Google Scholar and I've come across an SLR already on the topic that I want, but it is published in a C-grade journal. So, yeah. um, and I know why it is in a C-grade journal because they have not taken, uh, you know, the- Obviously 11 papers. Yeah, 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 11 yeah. papers. Yeah. So can I uh, do a better study and then you can. I can do that? You can. But in that, ma'am, see, hiding data never helps. It right. will always be good in the paper that you write that there is a paper, but right. it, the limitation of it is that it's only been done on 11. Uh, and I can state that, right? That because, can be stated. Yeah, That's because true. I can see the gaps there already. Yes, yes. Yeah. You have to, it's, it's like selling your paper, ma'am. You'll have to say that there's something in the market which was not there and I'm giving it to you. Fair enough. Uh, Ma'am, I was not very clear no. in the PICO bit uh, on uh, I, the, inter uh, the intervention. Yeah. So, uh, so if you can explain. Intervention, Vrinda ma'am, have you heard about what is a moderator? Yes, I know. Yes, I understand what a moderator is. So moderator is the intervention. In meta-analysis, what we are going to do is, in meta-analysis, when we go forward tomorrow, hmm. suppose attitude impacts intention. It's a direct bivariate relationship. 
that's right okay. <coughs> attitude so, kar do, please please everybody else please mute <coughs> attitude impacts intention right i got some 40 papers where right. attitude impacts intention and there's a correlation value to do meta analysis my work is done but this is just accumulation of that Okay. i have to go further advance and bring in a moderator between them so i want to see that when attitude impacts intention hmm. does religion of a consumer play a role and how will i see i'll not collect primary data i'll right. go back to these 40 papers divide them on the basis of religion make a new column in meta analysis and see the moderation Okay. We'll do that process in the next two days. Yes, I, I, I'll need to um, go through it with you in steps because I'm not very yes. clear about. Uh, Wait, by by third day, ma'am, I think this doubt. Do remind me on third yes. day if it's not clear. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Good evening, ma'am. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am as you just described that uh, we have we can make a search on factors uh, impacting the purchase intention. let's take for an example the one you were quoting so ma'am yes. we can do it like on the factors or we can take one particular factor and then link it with the purchase intention or how it can be we done. will be doing it on each factor and purchase intention and for every factor and purchase intention there will be a meta analytical sheet so suppose you have a whole model conceptual model where you have five factors impacting pi you will have to do the meta analytical calculations from those 40 papers five times and ma'am if we are focusing only on the slr paper then we don't want to write a meta paper yes. we slr to ma'am you can take up qualitative papers also why do you need then to you can have a broader set of papers because you don't need papers which uh, have a statistical value you could take up qualitative papers also conceptual papers review papers then you can take everything in slr okay you don't and have to be restricted now that if i don't get the correlation value of this and yes. this i can't do meta you you're not restricted in an slr got it and one more thing that as you were telling we can we have to do full text screening yeah so uh how do we do that like uh, full text screening on the basis of what like we have gone reading to the it. title reading no, have... full ha uh, full text screening means reading all those papers ma'am like we have gone through title we have gone through the abstract the next step is like the full text screening ma'am mm -hmm. after abstract there is a 6000 word now who's going to read that that is full text screening Okay, then we can sort the variables, factors, and all that everything. Yes, yes, yes. And sometimes, ma'am, before sorting and meta analysis, sometimes you know you read the abstract. It seems to be okay. You read yes. the full paper. You reject it. That is what is happening in the Prisma. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, madam. Good evening, madam. This is Shankar. Yes. Uh, I want to conduct a meta analysis on certain model. Okay. In okay. that model, we have four dimensions. Okay. okay, I want to measure the cumulative impact of some okay. x and y, and y okay. and z. Okay. Okay. I mean, for for every relation we have, uh, when we are measuring the every relation impact, we have to forty samples or what? Our entire model we have for forty samples. I'll explain this. Although I wanted to take it uh, tomorrow, but I'll show you. Maybe this could. Uh, okay. So. i'm just showing it please don't others don't get confused this will get very clear tomorrow but because sir has put up so i'm just showing give me one minute uh this is an actual meta analysis sheet of my uh, paper okay of course all values are not there because it's not published yet it's in review with an a grade journal um and i'm hoping for rejection only i mean i'm, I'm very uh, with a grade journals you should always be prepared for rejections so this is my paper number 1 this is how i make an excel sheet this is for meta analysis not for slr okay uh, i had some i think 34 to 36 papers okay 34 36 paper i suppose the topic was urge to buy factors impacting urge to buy in a consumer title of the paper author year first thing is i made an excel sheet let's organize data location of the study x y z sample size 
which I will need in meta-analysis. And the second value which I need for social sciences meta-analysis is correlation. Now, if you see in paper number one, I got only this relationship correlation. I did not get all. Okay? Perceived enjoyment, perceived usefulness. In the second paper also, I got only these two. But by the time I did this process for 40 papers, you see over here, there were out of 40 papers, there were seven papers which gave me correlation values of urge to buy and perceived enjoyment out of 40. All 40 didn't give me, doesn't matter. Seven gave me. And out of 40, three gave me correlation value and sample size for urge to buy and perceived usefulness. So your question, sir, all papers will not give you values of all bivariates. Am I clear now? Okay. Got it, sir? Yes, it is. It is not possible. Actually, all papers in the... have... No, 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 madam. I am asking uh, in the previous, one of the previous guy asking the sample size of the relation. When we are measuring the relation, how much of the sample we required? You informed so, that uh, 40 samples are required. No, yes. I said 40 papers. So look at this Excel sheet. Any, any relation of the meta? Oh, meta-analysis relation. Uh, sir, we generally take... Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, uh, yes. It, is, it is subjective. It is subjective. But in A-grade papers, I have not seen a meta-analysis being done on less than 8 to 10 items. 8 to 10 relations. Yes, relational values. You can't do a meta-analysis on two values. What is the fun of doing meta-analysis? So at least eight values, sir. If even in my papers, when, for example, I got perceived usefulness, but I did not include it in my meta-analysis because out of all 40 papers, I got only three correlational values. So I, I rejected this. I did not take this. Okay. okay. But at least we have eight, eight papers, right? Eight, eight is a good number, sir. Again, I'll go to, I, I'm citing A grade uh, journals. My okay. parameter is A-grade journals. I see those meta-analysis papers and conclude how much I have to take. Okay, I, I, wa I want to uh, tell one, yeah. one point, madam. Uh, actually, uh, you informed that Justin Paul is one of the leading author to write the literature review papers, right? He, he writes on, uh, sir, he's published papers on meta-analysis, conceptual meta-analysis papers, plus he has Actually, he's an editor to a A-grade journal called International Journal of Consumer Sciences. And this is the second Consumer year. Studies. Sorry? Consumer Studies. Yes, Consumer International Studies. Journal of Consumer Studies. Sorry, I have medical students, so I got uh, swayed away. And uh, uh, IGCS May, this is the second year he's come up with a special issue on uh, systematic review and meta-analysis. So much so that he's a uh, he's a special guest editor to Journal of Business Research, A Star Journal. Even in yeah. JBR, he has a special issue on SLR and meta analysis. That is why I yes do. yes yes yes, madam. Actually, we uh, Justin Paul is the collaborator of one of my paper. Uh, okay, one of okay. my paper is under review under JAMS JMS Journal, journal of Academy of Marketing Science. Oh great, it's great. FTPP journal. So yes. in that journal, we, we in that manuscript, we written just four uh, four papers is enough for building a relation, meta re, meta relation between the two variables. So you have submitted a paper where you have given a relationship with only four. Four, uh, four, yes. Four, uh -huh. four yes. Sir, so it, uh, sir, it's okay. It depends. It depends on the reviewer. This is very subjective. It depends okay, on okay. the reviewer. Yeah. Okay. M means I, I'm ask. Uh, I have an a doubt. Is any. Uh, in any of the book or any of the paper is any uh, particular point. Yes. This much of papers are required for the building a relation, meta relation between the two variables. No. I'm See, asking that in, point. Meta, in meta analysis, there are two, three values. First, there's an effect size, then there's heterogeneity, then there's moderation or intervention. But yes, for yes. intervention or moderation, Borenstein says anything less than 10 papers, you don't test moderation. Yeah, yeah. More, for moderation, it, it yeah, more than 10 is, um, minimum 10 is yes. enough. Yes. Yes, but I'm, I'm asking the building a relation between the two variables, meta relation. Uh, 
are you talking about effect size calculating effect size that is what you are saying yes 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 yes, ah, yes calculating yes. effect yes, size yes. sir 8 to 10 papers are needed but if you have come across 40 papers and there was a new variable for which you found only three values and you have reported it there's nothing wrong in it don't worry okay is it clear yeah there's nothing wrong in reporting more there yeah there's nothing wrong in it next question uh, good evening ma'am good evening ma'am uh, yeah. so this is neha actually uh, whenever we do slr we do take previous researches those who have taken slr no Uh, no. let us say to uh, to have a gap or anything else uh, what previous researches have done or uh, okay, let us yes, say if yes. there is a gap of 10 to 15 years in meta analysis yeah. if already a research is being published let us yeah. say 5 to 10 years back can yeah. we use the secondary data of that meta analysis in our current research is it feasible to take or uh, we should take only the papers um, even if you do that i am assuming even if you do that how will you justify the prisma what will you write in prisma that you went to a particular database and got how many papers okay because i have i have been doing a meta analysis uh, literature before doing yeah. that i read just few of the papers of meta analysis and yeah. uh, i have seen some videos also they have told us that it is better that you collect some of the meta analysis studies in the topic where you want to do research and they should be you know uh, they should be uh, having a gap of 10 to 15 years so what they have 10 to 15 years 10 to 15 years is absolutely fine what they must have said is that in the meta analytical studies that person also might have used 50 papers okay and maybe when you are doing the google search etc or whatever scopus search might be all those 50 papers some might get out some might, you might miss on something so go to the meta analytical paper of your topic see those 50 papers all papers don't even cite it all papers don't even list the 50 papers they have used by the way but in case it is uh, there in appendices read all those papers or at least include them in your total search of scopus that is what they must have said you get my point neha ma'am ha uh, yes ma'am uh, they are telling so you that... to use they are telling you to use the data set of that paper not the paper right. itself right right the data set let us say they have uh, they have uh, come out with an combined r so we can use that r in the paper in our current paper no 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 you can't okay okay you can't Uh, so basically we can read them uh, for our clarification and uh, but we cannot use their data no 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 you can't use data from meta analytical paper to do a me another meta analysis no that can't be done okay okay not possible yeah okay thank you for the good evening question good evening ma'am yes. good evening ma'am ma ma this is shashti and from yes uh, from bangalore Yes, yes. Ma'am, uh, is it there any criteria to select for uh, systematic review? Uh, that means journal. Journal, ma'am. There ma are special is issues. No, no, no. There are special issues nowadays. So uh, the special issues which I know are uh, two are of Justin Paul sir, IGCS and uh, Journal of Business Research. These are the two I know from LinkedIn. There's another of Dr. Yogesh Devedi. uh his journal name it's again an a star journal i i'm forgetting the name ig internet something and even he has got a special issue on meta analysis but only in it studies these are the three special issues that i know of in a grade journal they might be no there aren't any in b or c there aren't any in b or c which i know of special issues okay thank you ma'am so target them ma'am special issue it's easier to get through than the main issue next question uh, good evening ma'am yeah. ma'am first of all thank you for a wonderful presentation it was really informative uh, ma'am i have two questions uh, first like can you tell me which all statistical tools are mostly used in meta analysis so i'll tell that tomorrow and day after even if i say that even if i name that so effect size is calculated 
heterogeneity is calculated okay fixed and random model is chosen subgroup analysis is done meta regression is done all this we are going to do in the next two days okay okay and ma'am my second question is like uh, it's a general question like if during the initial days we somehow thought of writing a paper in a particular topic and we check on google scholar or scopus that this topic are in being written like meta analysis part but during the process if we like someone comes up with the uh, paper on the same topic like do we need to drop our idea then uh no don't drop it sir what happens is that um don't drop it's a lot of it's a lot of um, you know hard work which has gone that's what try and differentiate your paper from his your paper cannot have the absolutely same pico as his it's not possible that is not okay. possible so try and differentiate please go ahead with it worst comes to worst if it doesn't get selected in an a grade journal at least it will go in a b grade journal but to get it published it's a lot of effort meta analysis is a lot of effort yes and one more thing like you talked about the assembling of team the second step yes yes so, yes so yes. ma'am is it a necessary criteria of to have like not eight necessary, people or sir. 10 people not ma necessary can... but uh, you know when you are alone the editor will write to you that uh, how did you take care of the bias hmm sure ma'am ma can a team of like two three people can do it oh yes 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 two two people is also enough there in the sample paper i showed you there were two people okay Okay, we will take last you, uh, question from the journal, yeah, yes, uh, and then we will read the chat. Yes, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, just hold on a minute. We have uh, Hamid sir. I think he's waiting, and he raised yeah. his hand. Yeah, Hamid yeah. sir. You can go. Janab, are you here? Okay. If no, then then uh, another person. Uh, I can ask tomorrow. It's okay. Thanks. Okay. No, 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 Hamid. Uh, please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. We, we, If you have question, you can ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, okay. I just, I just wanted to ask you first of all that uh, regarding the uh, part where you said uh, we need uh, quite a long time to do uh, the literature review. Uh, yes. First of all, uh, I want to ask you: Can it be? What, for example, if I'm doing my thesis, can it be as part of my uh, thesis? Because it involves a lot of uh, uh, the things that I would eventually end up doing for my thesis. Yes, yes, ma'am. In a PhD, you have a larger scope of SLR than in a research paper. In a research paper, I have barely eight thousand words. so i can only do an slr in a phd you can experiment first do an slr of your topic okay then go for quantitative analysis not meta analysis any quantitative analysis like sem or correlation etc so in phd there is a lot of scope of slr uh, before you go for your primary data analysis okay thanks Thank you, Hamid. Yeah, Nidhi, ma'am. Last question, quickly, please. Yeah, last question. Yeah, ma'am. Is there any specific number to the references we give in these articles? No, no. references of which article? In SLR, uh, in yeah. uh, regarding the reference section, is there yeah. any uh, number like reference no. should be more than this particular? And how do we just include, like, how to decide which? uh what to which articles to be included in references i suppose the studies what we have then we have to include those in references yes you can we do that you can include those uh and uh, it is um, uh, at least those 114 studies which you have used they those have to be cited so 114 references anyways will be there um thank you Yeah. Okay, so I just want to read the question in the chat box. Miss Putri, she asks, uh, can we take the qualitative articles in our SLR? What if most of the studies on the SLR topics are in qualitative? Uh, SLR uh, is only qualitative, not quantitative, unless and until it turns into a meta-analysis. So yes. Okay. Then Mr. Pushpa, he asks, uh, is the funnel diagram and steps of SLR same? Yes, and it will come tomorrow. Okay. Then Mohammad Osman asks, uh, do we conduct meta-analysis or SLR on a specific topic, or can we consider the antecedents of a specific construct? Specific topic. Uh, so much so that defined by PICO. 
how we can specify the topic pico right pico yeah pico okay the if you don't have a team to work with can uh, you still do a sl or a meta analysis we can do we okay. can do then uh, mr vidya uh, shagar kumar uh, can we say that doing exclusion in the main, uh, main challenging part of systematic analysis how to develop introduction section step by step that that's a very long question i mean how to develop introduction that introduction. i could be able to answer here that, okay. that's a huge uh, yeah okay then can we uh, include it, uh, different quantitative methodology oriented papers in meta analysis for example yes. papers contain different uh, data analysis method like scm yes. F, F, fsqca yeah okay yeah so, so in in social sciences i can take up anova i can take up correlation i could take up um, beta coefficient correlation all these values can be uh, changed to uh, okay then dr anjali sharma she asks uh, in slr how would be analyzed without meta analysis is it possible to do analysis in slr without meta analysis i hope she already get the answer right i didn't get yes. that one she asks the is it possible to do uh, yeah, yeah, analysis in slr without meta analysis analysis without meta analysis uh, no statistical analysis means meta analysis and qualitative means slr just take it this way so that's all i think for today okay thank you so right, much for right, the so we will see tomorrow yeah we are we'll out see of you time. tomorrow okay yeah. anything that comes to your mind please put it up in the whatsapp group yeah i am opening the whatsapp group yeah yeah, yeah, you yeah. can write down and uh, yeah and the youtube video i've given you if you want to you know see anything further like somebody wants to oh, see another, another, another. Please go ahead and yeah i just missed some question that what is the major difference between slr and bibliometric analysis bibliometric analysis is something to do only with the references not with the content of the paper it is only the the analysis of references okay. authors okay then quality assessment of selected articles is optional in slr yes quality yes Okay okay thank you so much thank you see you tomorrow everyone goodbye okay. questions you. on the whatsapp please and uh, i'll just just give you my email id also just wait 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 hold on so anyone who you know there are people working so on my email id also so this is my email id you all have my number also so personal whatsapp also but uh, of course the group when you message in the group everybody benefits right Okay thank you so much thank you so, so much that's all for today okay thank you see you tomorrow same time and same zoom link